Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 263 of Manage the Wilds. I'm your host, Nick Madsen. We often face situations that we are not necessarily prepared for. Every time you deal with something in wildlife, it is something that you don't deal with normally or you come across a weird situation. One of the questions I got asked at an interview one time was, it's 9 o'clock p.m. on a Friday after a long, hard week on your job. You are relaxing with family or friends, and the telephone rings, and you answer it. It is dispatch contacting you about a bear that is in a Forest Service campground on the mountain. Other than yourself, there are two conservation officers close enough to respond in a timely manner. This area has bear chronic bear conflicts and humans with humans, but bears are not typically in the area when you respond in the past. Please describe your response in this situation. So these are questions we get in asked in interviews, but they are also questions that we face daily. Situation happened. I got a call that a cougar was on somebody's porch and I needed to respond as quickly as possible. The first thing I did is I got in touch with the biologist from dispatch, the wildlife biologist. The wildlife biologist headed over and verified that there was a cougar. The biologist called me back. We got law enforcement there, and we got the rest of our team there, and we started communicating as quickly as possible. Somebody had to go get the tranquilizer gun from one location. Somebody had to go get the trap the barrel trap from another location and we all had to coordinate to meet up at the same time so we could deal with this situation. Law enforcement got there. They secured the scene, make sure everybody was safe, make sure people stay in the house that needed to, made sure that people couldn't drive up and down the road in case the darted, uh, we darted the cougar and it took off running. This is a common thing that we do. Number one thing that I tell everybody is to communicate A situation like this, you get a call from dispatch, you answered the phone, you now become responsible because you answered the phone. It is a safety issue. You have to respond to safety issues. They cause some safety concerns, obviously. Cougars, again, you got some safety concerns. Deer, elk, moose, depending on the situation, uh, it could be a safety concern. And so whatever poses a great threat to uh, humans, you have to respond. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start communicating with my team. If my team is just two law enforcement officers, I'm going to call them uh, as I am headed to the area. I'm, if I know I have service in the area, then that kind of changes because they can wait until I go there, see if there's a bear. And I call them and be like, okay, there's not a bear here. The bear's gone. Uh, then they don't have to respond. But if they, if I know the area doesn't have service, then one of them is going to have to respond. We could do it one of two different ways. I could respond, see that there is a bear, then drive into an area with service, get a hold of somebody, get the ball rolling. That's one possibility. The other is I agree to meet one of the officers in that area. We go find a bear, then we can work with on the other officer, he can go get the tranquilizer gun and the trap, and we can all show up and take care of the situation. But the number one thing to remember is to communicate. When you are dealing with bear situations, there's a whole lot of things that uh, come into play. Number one, the bears are usually there because of food. And that's just the way it is. The bears are looking for food. They are hungry. They came to this area and they came across food. And that's why they're conflict. So when you deal with bears and a bear-human conflict situation, think about public safety. Because whatever happens when you're dealing with bears or cougars, from my experience, is it always draws public. They are always looking to be involved. We darted a cougar in the middle of an urban area. The lady who had the cougar in her yard on her back porch called her neighbor and she called 50 other people, FaceTimed it. They all showed up. Uh, She also talked to her neighbor because her neighbor asked what was going on. Then the neighbor called everybody and they showed up. By the time we got done dealing with a cougar situation, we had 50 uh, 50 to 100 people all standing wanting to see the cougar. So just expect people are going to show up 
And number two, it's important to remember that whatever decision you make is going to be scrutinized and people are going to look over it. So make sure you are prepared to deal with both the pros and the cons of whatever your actions are going to be. Now, for me to answer the rest of the questions, how would you respond? It depends on, is this a chronic bear issue? The same bear causing problems over and over again? Is the bear injured? Because all of these are going to change how we respond. Because we could euthanize the animal. We could dart the animal. We could haze the animal using dogs or even just cracker shells. There are so many different ways that we could respond. Is this an area that uh, we should expect to deal with bears? Because you're going to treat that differently versus um, an area that's fairly close to an urban population. Again, bears are often a concern. So normally in these situations, we would try to trap the bear without using tranquilizer or trap the bear using or dart the bear using a tranquilizer and move it as quick as possible. Again, public safety is the number one concern that we have. And so you have to respond, you have to communicate, and you have to go through the policies because whatever situation you are dealing with uh, could change. Okay, let's say you show up and there's no bears there. Normally, this is what I do. I go and I take a report and I say, okay, you saw a bear at this time at this date. All right. After they get done telling me and I write down their report, I'm going to tell them to store their food and drinks in containers that are bear safe or up in a tree. Dispose of trash in, de- in bear proof dumpsters. Most picnics or campgrounds have bear proof dumpsters. Wipe down your tables. Wipe down your grill. Remove the grease from the grease traps from like your camp chefs. Uh, and make sure you take all the food away from your tent. Again, trying to remove as much scent as possible to protect yourself in your tent or your campers. Uh, Bears, no matter what you think, bears will get in cars. So if you take all your food and store it in a car, guess what? They're going to get in. In some situations, uh, electric fences are a pretty good deterrent. And so people should use them if they are pretty nervous about it. Uh, If you're hiking in bear areas or you're in your campground and you see bears, some of the times that bears are the most active is during the dawn and dusk. So make sure you are uh, staying aware at those times, looking out for yourself. Move in groups. Uh, Bears will often avoid groups. Um, They don't often attack groups unless there's some other issue going on. Make noise as you go. So I know people like to walk through nature, quiet this can be, um, but never go hiking with headphones. That's just, sorry, that's just a bad idea. Hiking with headphones means you're not aware of your surroundings. And if you're in bear country, make sure you have your headphones off. Make noise, talk to people, sing out loud, carry bells. I don't care. Stay away from animal carcasses. I don't know how many times people have been attacked because they walked up on an elk. And we're like, oh, what's this? And they scared the mother off the sow and she comes back. And then again, store your food in uh, those kind of scent lock bags, reducing the amount of scent possible. Because again, bears are looking for food always. At your home, make sure you secure your trash. Most of the issues we have with cabins is because of trash and garbage. Those are two different things, the trash cans and just the garbage that is left around. Make sure you are going around securing those to reduce the amount of food because that's exactly what bears want. When bears are trying to get into cabins, especially cabins that aren't inhabited, uh, it's like your summer cabin or whatever, you can use bear mats, Uh, which are wooden planks with nails or screws uh, in front of the doors and windows because they're not going to put their paws on that, obviously. You could do motion-activated lights or noise makers. Another thing you could do is get dogs, garden hoses to spray, and then bear pepper spray. If you encounter a black bear, you're in a campground, you come across it, stand your ground. Don't... Back up, don't lie down, don't play dead, just stay calm. 
give the pair the bear a chance to leave because if you are backing away or trying to move it may think you are prey but if you start walking towards it it also may think you are acting aggressive and come after you don't run away don't climb trees because black bears can run they can run up to 35 miles an hour and they can also outclimb anything that i know and then if a bear stands up, grunts, moans, makes other sounds, if it's not being aggressive, these are just ways that a bear gets a better look and smell and express itself. Start sniffing around. Know that. And so just be aware. Use bear pepper spray. Shoot to kill. Never to wound. Because uh, you're just going to make the bear even matter. So make sure you, if you're going to shoot, shoot to kill it. And then always fight back. And then call and a biologist, but you've already done that. That's why we're responding. So this is some of the questions we face in interviews, but also the questions we face in real life. Have a great day. Stay wild.